In this part of the lesson, we're going to look at how to write your first basic VBA procedure. We're going to pick up immediately where we left off in the previous part of the lesson. So by way of a very quick recap, we opened up Excel and then chose to create a brand new blank workbook. We then used the developer tab in the ribbon to open up the Visual Basic Editor application. Once we'd opened the application, we inserted a new module by right clicking into the Project Explorer and using Insert Module. After modifying the font size using the Tools Options dialog box, we were in the perfect position to start writing some code. To create code in VBA, you write a list of instructions that you'd like your application to carry out. The instructions you write must be contained within some kind of procedure. Now, there are several types of procedure in VBA, but the type we'll be sticking with in this part of the lesson is the simplest type called a subroutine. To begin a new subroutine, you start by writing the word sub, followed by a space, and then the name that you'd like to assign to the subroutine. There are several rules you must follow when you name things in VBA, all of which you can read about in the reference section to this module. For now, the most important rule we need to follow is not using spaces in the names of things. I'd like to call my first program, literally, my first program. So I can do that by just typing in the name like so. Now here I haven't used spaces, but that can lead to program names that are slightly difficult to read. If you prefer, you can use underscores to represent spaces, which hopefully makes things a little easier for your end users to read. Having typed in the name, all you need to do at that point is hit enter at the end of the line, and a couple of things should happen for you. First of all, you should notice the parentheses appear at the end of the subroutine name. You'll also see the line end sub appears at the bottom. And you might have also noticed that the word sub gained a capital letter S, whereas I typed it in a lowercase. All of the instructions you want your subroutine to carry out must now be written between the line that begins with sub and the one that ends with end sub. Having just created a new subroutine, we could begin writing its instructions exactly where the flashing text cursor currently is. But later on, if we need to make changes to the code or simply read it back, it will help immensely if we've made at least some effort to lay out the code a bit more neatly. So I'd recommend pressing Enter to give yourself a blank line, and then press the Tab key to indent your code one space. Another thing that will help immensely, particularly when you're first getting started, is to add comments to your code to indicate what you're trying to do. You can begin a comment in VBA by typing a single quote, an apostrophe, and following that, you can type in whatever description you like. The first instruction I'd like to write in my program is going to create a new worksheet in the workbook. So my comment is going to simply say, create a worksheet. You don't need to close the quotes to finish your comment. All you need to do is press enter at the end of the line, and you should find that the line turns green to indicate that it's a comment. So this will be completely ignored when your program runs. Now we can write out the instruction that will carry out the action indicated by the comment. Many instructions in VBA follow a particular pattern where you begin by referring to the thing that you want to manipulate. In VBA terms, the thing is referred to as an object. After the object, you can then either say what action you'd like to perform on the object, which in VBA speak is called a method, or you can say which attribute of the object you'd like to manipulate, which in VBA speak is referred to as a property. The object in this particular case is referred to as worksheets, and it's a reference to all of the worksheets currently in the workbook. So if I know that, I can simply begin by typing out the word worksheets. If I wasn't sure whether the word worksheets existed or how to spell it, what I can do instead is get a bit of help from the VB editor. If I simply backspace the word worksheets away, before beginning to type in on the line, I can press a keyboard shortcut, Control and Spacebar and that will force a list referred to as the IntelliSense list to appear. I can use the mouse to scroll through this list, or I can begin typing in a word that I know. So if I know that the word worksheets exists, I can begin typing in the word worksheets to jump to that part of the list. I can now either use the mouse, I could double click on the word to type it in, but even better in this case, I can use the arrow keys on the keyboard to highlight it, and then press the tab key on the keyboard to type in the word and leave myself at the end of that word. To separate the thing from the action or the object from the method, what I need to do next is enter a full stop or a period. If I type in a full stop or a period, the IntelliSense list reappears. And from there, what I can do is pick the action that I would like to apply. 
The action or the method that I want to apply in this case is called add, which is the first one in the list. So here I can either type in the letter A or I can use the arrow keys on the keyboard to highlight the word add. And then I can either press tab to type in the word and leave my cursor at the end of the word. Or even better in this case, I can press enter on the keyboard to type in the highlighted word and move on to the next line. And that's our very first instruction written. Later on when we run this subroutine, the first thing it will do is create a new worksheet and select that worksheet for us as well. The next thing I'd like my program to do is write some values into the cells on that worksheet. So I'm going to write a new blank line by pressing enter and then add a new comment by typing an apostrophe and typing something like enter values into cells. I can press enter at the end of the line to create the comment. And the next type of object I want to refer to is called a range. So I can either type in the word range, or if I prefer a bit of help, I can backspace that. And at the beginning of the line, I can press control and spacebar to display the IntelliSense list. I can then look for the word range in the list by typing R, and then use the down arrow key on the keyboard to highlight the word range, followed by pressing the tab key on the keyboard to have it typed in. I then need to specify exactly which cell I'm interested in. And to do that, I need to open a set of round brackets or parentheses. And at that point, I'll see a tooltip appear on screen, which shows me I can indicate which cell it is I want to reference. To do that, I'm going to enter some double quotes and then type in cell reference A1. I can then close the double quotes and close the parentheses. And that's a reference to a range object. What I then want to do is refer to one of its properties. So in the previous instruction, we use a method, the add method to perform an action. What I'd like to do for this particular example is change a property of the object I've referenced. We follow the same principle. We type in a full stop to see the list of available methods and properties. And the property I'm interested in this time is called value. So again, if I begin typing in the word value in the list, I should jump to either onto it or near to it. I can then use the arrow keys to highlight the word and then press tab to have the rest of the word typed in. To assign something to a property, I then need to make it equal to something. So I'm going to type in a space after the word value, followed by the word equals. And what I would like to do is put the name of the person writing the code. So in my case, I'm going to put the name wise owl into cell A1. To put any specific text into VBA, we open some double quotes and then type in the literal text. So in this case, I'm going to type in wise owl. That's not my real name, by the way, but I'll go with that for the time being. And then close the double quotes and press enter. For the next instruction, I'd like to do something very similar by changing the value of cell A2 to be the current date. So again, I'm going to begin the next line by pressing control and space and look for the word range in the IntelliSense list. Highlight it using the arrow keys. If you want an even shorter shortcut, rather than pressing tab and then typing in the open round bracket, I can type in the open round bracket or parenthesis right now with the word range highlighted. So if I do that, you'll see the word range gets typed in and the open parenthesis as well. I can then open some more double quotes, type in A2, close the double quotes and close the parentheses, followed by a full stop. I can then change or look for the value property again. So I'm going to look for the word value and then highlight it in the list. And again, rather than pressing tab to type in the word and then typing in the equal sign, I'm going to immediately type in the equal sign to have both typed in at the same time. What I'd like to happen when I run this code is for it to enter the current date. So that should be different every day that somebody runs this subroutine. So I can't just write that in literally into my code. What I'm going to do instead is refer to one of the functions in VBA that returns a particular value. Now, if I press control and space, I'm going to look for the word date in the list. I can press type in a single D for that. And if I press enter at the end of that line, I will assign the result of the date function to the value property of the A2 range object. For the final instruction in this basic subroutine, I'd then like to apply some basic formatting to the two cells that I've entered values into. So I'm going to create another blank line and then another comment that simply says format cells. And then on the next line, I'm going to begin by referring to another range object. So again, I'm going to press control and space. 
look for the word range and have that highlighted in the list, then type in the open parenthesis, and then some double quotes. I can refer to two cells at the same time by typing in, just as you would in a formula in Excel, A1 colon A2, and then close the double quotes and close the parentheses, followed by a full stop. Now the instructions we've written so far have always referred to a single object followed by a single method or a single object and a single property. We've referred to an object now and we need a sequence of properties to reach the one we want. There is no simple colour or background colour or fill colour property for a, a range object. What we need to do first is refer to a property called interior. So if I type in the three letters INT, I'll see the word interior highlighted. I can then follow that with another full stop, which provides me with an, another list of properties. The one that I'm going to use in this case is called colour. If you're in the UK, watch out for the spelling of colour because there's no U in colour, according to VBA. I then want to make the colour equal to a different value. There's a variety of colours I can pick from. The simplest way to see a list is to press Control and Space and then type in the letters R, G, B, which is short for red, green, blue, which is one of the colour systems available in Microsoft products. I can then find some kind of lovely flowery named colour in the list. I think I'm going to go with R, G, B, Coral is the one I want to look for. There we go. And when I have the word highlighted, I can then press enter at the end of the line. And that's the final instruction for this procedure.